Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Tuesday and the patch notes have been posted, which means it's time for us to go through the top 5 changes of patch 1312. I'll let you guys know what the biggest changes were and what you can be looking forward to in the coming weeks. 1312 actually has a ton of very relevant changes, so many that I couldn't actually uh, fit all of them into the top 5, which is an unusual occurrence. So, But let's go ahead and talk through the biggest changes regardless and let you guys know what the biggest changes were going forwards. We're going to start off here at the number 5 mark with the Melio nerfs. Now, Melio is in intended to be an enchanter support, right? The whole point, Emilio, is that he doesn't do that much damage. He heals you, he shields you, he keeps you safe, and he cleanses any CC that happens to land on you. And that's all fine and dandy. However, people have been playing Emilio not for any of those reasons, but because Fired Up deals so much damage. I, I said this even in my review of Emilio. It's crazy how much damage his passive deals, and basically the pros finally caught on and said, wow, why would we ever play this champion as an enchanter when we could play him for just all of the damage that he does? And so Riot are nipping this one in the bud, Fired Up is no longer scaling at all. It is a 15% of the of the uh, allies AD period and does not scale into the later stages of the game. This means that Melio's damage will not scale at all into the later stages of the game. I mean that he's very much so dependent on his allies actually building damage and dealing damage on their own, rather than giving them just a frankly absurd amount of damage for free by doing things he was already going to do to them in general. It's a little sad if you're playing Melio, and I know I'm disappointed to not have my friendly Melios be giving me this buff anymore, but it does make a lot of sense, and it does reinforce Melio's strengths are in the protection area and not in the kill everyone area. Moving on down to the Yumi nerfs. That's right, the cat is back in the patch notes because she's too strong in pro play. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh, the support itemization changes were massively valuable for Yumi, especially in the hands of pro players. Uh, Echoes of Helia is an absurdly crazy good item on Yumi on top of Imperial Mandate, allowing Yumi with an ally to basically just burst people down from 100 to 0, which is kind of crazy. Ryder once again trying to move the cat away from pro play and into the hands of newer players, but a permanently untargetable enchanter is pretty much always going to be tough to balance in my honest opinion. These are damage and utility nerfs basically across the board to Yumi. I think every single one of her buttons got weaker in some form or another other than her Q, which is the most difficult output that she has. And in general, I think that these are fine nerfs, but it does mean that Yumi is weaker across the board. So I do expect a follow-up change at some point from Riot to help buff up her lower skilled play as opposed to her pro play. We'll see if that ends up materializing, but I do expect follow-up changes to Yumi at some point, which is why these changes aren't higher on the list. Moving on to the number three changes here, we're going to be talking about Rel. Now, Rel has been making waves after her rework and, of course, after the hotfixes that actually made her worth playing, and so she's landed quite strong following all of those, mandating nerfs in this patch and some cleanup to help Rel feel a little bit less clunky, which is the whole point of the CGU in the first place. Rel's damage is down basically across the board. The only compensation part she got in her entire, in this entire change list, is a very small decrease in the wind-up time on Shattering Strike, which should make her CC combos land a lot more reliably. Now, this does mean that her allies are going to have to bring the damage for Rel. She's not going to deal as much damage on her own, which I think is generally fine. Rel's outputs are supposed to be being tanky and CCing people and not murdering them on her own. There are also a bunch of jungle-centric changes in here. Rel jungle apparently was extremely good on the last patch, and Riot are tapping that down by quite a bit. Her early game clear shouldn't be changed too much, but her mid game clear will be quite weaker, so do keep that in mind. It's not a dead build, but jungle Rel is going to feel a lot weaker overall, and you're going to be dealing a lot of damage of course, because of these changes. They shouldn't dramatically make Rel a lot weaker, uh, but they will reinforce what her intended strengths actually are supposed to be. Moving on to the number two changes here are the Rumble changes. Now, these are pretty massive Rumble changes in terms of how he currently feels to play. Now, I'm no Rumble main, but I do have a, a big liking for the Yordle in the mech suit, and currently, Rumble's Q deals an absurdly high amount of damage. If you're not expecting how much damage a fully channeled Rumble Q will do, you'll be, like, blinking in shock after you take a trade with Rumble at level one and say, where did my health bar go? All he did is press Q and I lost my entire health bar. And this means that Rumble has historically been a bit of a glass cannon. He does lots of damage, but he doesn't have a lot of survivability, meaning that he basically coughs up his entire payload and then hits Zonny's Hourglass and prays for the best. These changes are basically aimed at making Rumble more of a brawling Rumble-type character. Uh, primarily, the Flamespitter nerfs here are just massive damage nerfs. He's literally losing, like, over 100 points of damage on his Q alone at maximum rank, but it did gain a max health scaling to compensate. Of course, max health scalings are a lot weaker in the early stages of the game, meaning that Rumble will suffer quite a bit unless he's up against tankier targets or after um, sort 
sort of the mid game rolls around and targets actually have health that make his percent health scalings relevant. Um, and his scrap shield also gained a max health ratio, meaning that any incidental health that Rumble gets off of his preferred itemizations, things like Demonic Embrace and Raleigh's Crystal Scepter, will actually add to his durability by pressing W. The biggest change here, of course, though, is that Rumble's overheat now can go up to 150 rather than 100, but the danger zone threshold did not change. It's still at 50. This means that Rumble has like twice as much time before he overheats um, that, uh, on the new patch versus on live currently, and he doesn't overheat for quite as long as he used to generally meaning that Rumble will get multiple rotations of abilities off when he's in the danger zone, as opposed to basically pressing every button he has once before overheating. And so this sort of brawling Rumble is likely to become the preferred way to play Rumble, which should make him feel a little bit better in the top lane, where brawling is sort of a requirement to deal with all the champions that are up there. I don't think this is a nerf necessarily, but I do think that this is going to require a very large overhaul in how Rumble players think about Rumble and how they build Rumble and how they play Rumble, because he's just going to feel like a very, very different champion after these changes, and I'm excited to see how they shake out. Finally, let's go on down to the number one change, which, of course, is to Zeri. Wow, Zeri and Yumi in the patch notes again, because pros are abusing them. Crazy. Never could have seen this coming. <laughs> Anyways, um, Zeri is having some pretty crazy changes here. Her old passive is literally going away. She no longer has the shield steel passive, and instead, her Q passive is moving to her passive passive. That's right, the ability that says Zeri's Q is an auto attack and Zeri's right click is an ability is now her passive effect. Also, Q is now an auto attack in every way. Pressing Q is no longer an ability, period, meaning that it will no longer proc Sheen by pressing Q. Conversely, Zeri's right click is an ability in every way and will cause Zeri to trigger Sheen if she does have it. Now, this is a pretty big deal for Zeri. It does basically remove Sheen-oriented builds from Zeri's repertoire unless you have, like, crazy right click like, passive manipulation kind of things. Like, maybe you could still do it. Uh, I fundamentally see this as the end of the Sheen-based Zeri builds. Riot are really beating her over the head with a nerf bat saying, build crit, we no longer want you to be building Sheen at all. This is because of the Trinity Force uh, Hydra builds that Zeri is doing on in pro play. Naturally, it's the pro players ruining her yet again. I can't say that they're wrong for making these changes, but it does mean that if you are a Zeri player right now, do not build Sheen anymore unless you think you have the most godly right-click micro of anyone in the game. And those are the top five changes of this week's patch, guys. Let me know what you're most excited for down in the comment section below. I'm interested to play with the Rumble changes. I'm a little scared, but I'm interested to play with them regardless. You guys let me know what you think of the patch down in the comment section below, though. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days like today as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.